First two, first two verses with the refrain. <coughs> because we'll sing that at the beginning of service. Um, welcome to everyone who can worship either in person or on Zoom. If you, if, if you don't know who I am, I'm Pastor Will. Uh, I've been the pastor here at St. Paul for a little less than a year. It will be a year in two weeks, which is crazy how the year has flown by. Um, just a couple announcements before we get started. First off, right after church today, there are coffee and donuts and some other beverages downstairs. And if you haven't gotten to take part in one of our... Um, in one of our visioning sessions where we're talking kind of about our hopes and dreams for the future of our congregation and where God is calling us, uh, we're going we're gonna to sit in a little circle in the, on one side of the room and have that conversation with that coffee and, and donuts. So uh, I'd love for anyone who hasn't gotten to participate who'd like to, to stick around. We were done yesterday, uh, I'm sorry, yesterday, last week by about 1030, uh, or not 10:30, 11. I'm sorry. Uh, so we, we, we don't, you know, we don't try to uh, dilly dally, dally, but it's a really important conversation. Uh, if you find that the meetings are hard to make, but you want to give your input about the vision and the future of St. Paul as we just dream about what God is leading us to do, there is an online survey. I'd much rather have a conversation, but if if if, if you'd like to fill out the online survey, it's available online. It's short and sweet. I, I took out a couple questions, uh, but I'd love just to hear what God has placed on your heart for St. Paul for. Laytonsville, Gaithersburg, for the world, uh, for yourself, so that we can dream about where God is leading this congregation. Um, our summer Bible study started back up this week. I thought we had a great study about Elisha, and, and so we're, we're focusing on stories in the Bible that you don't often hear preached about or talked about in Sunday school, and we're kind of asking the question, uh, you know, where is God uh, leading us or teaching us with some of these more difficult stories in Scripture. So that will continue this Thursday at 7 p.m. If you'd like to come in person, you can come to the Fellowship Hall or you can join on the Zoom call. Uh, both are, 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 are very easy and, and whatever works best for you and your schedule or, um, or even just whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, and then and then uh, I have one final announcement, but it's not me who has the announcement. It's actually Miss Leslie. So I'm going to invite her up for our final announcement for today.
Sign up for VBS is on the website. It's going to be a really fun week. There's going to be a lot of music and, 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 and games and activities, and it's just going to be a great week. So feel free to invite a friend. Um, if, uh, if you'd like to help with VBS, either behind the scenes or out in front, please let Leslie or Melanie or myself know. We'd love all, any and all people to be as involved as they'd like to be as we just try to make a great week for some of the kids in our church and also uh, in our community. Uh, those are it for all of my announcements. I always offer up, is, is, there announce, is there any announcements that I'm missing this week? And, and so uh, be, before we do our call to worship, I just invite us to take a moment and center ourselves on why we're here this morning, who we've come to worship, and, and, and why we've gathered together. So feel free to take a moment just to breathe in. And as you're able, if you would stand for the call to worship as you're comfortable. Gather in awe before God who laid the foundations of the earth. Open your hearts to the steadfast love God offers. The deeds of God are beyond our knowing. Yet we catch glimpses of God's mercy and care. God does not forsake us when we are dismayed and afraid. Our Creator is with us in all times and places. God is a stronghold for the oppressed and troubled. The needy and the poor are not forgotten. God is ready to listen to us in these moments together. See, now is the acceptable time, the day of salvation. Surely God will meet us here in our faith community. How good it is when we sense our unity in Christ. Amen. So if you would remain standing or whatever posture is comfortable for worship, and Lou and Alan are going to lead us in some hymns of praise this morning.
nice, very nice. So the next hymn is one that I think most of us know. It's number 2040, Awesome God. There's a couple of new faces, but lots of familiar faces. People Will probably hasn't seen, I think, ever. No, it's, I'm thankful, and, and I, it's funny to get to meet people without their masks on, and, and they're a completely different person than with the mask on. Always better looking without the mask on. But um, uh, So this is the time when usually our children would get ready to go down to Sunday school with Ms. Leslie and Ms. Melly. but before you all leave... I believe we have a special thing we want to share with you both today. Uh, so I'm going to invite Sandy Walter uh, forward. I believe Melanie and Leslie forward as well. Give a big hand for I'll say thank you too because uh, this has been a crazy year for working with children. I'm sure for those of you who work in the school system, it's been even crazier. But uh, Melanie and Leslie have been faithful and, and just love our kids and our families, and, and uh, we're very blessed to have them. So thank you, Melanie and Leslie. I know they're, they're getting ready to go do that, uh, uh, but thank you so much. Now's the time when we have, if we have any prayer requests, uh, we can share them now. Uh, if you have any, whether you're here or in person or on Zoom. Uh, and if you're in person, I'm going to try to repeat just so the people on Zoom can hear your prayer requests and keep those in prayer. Um, so are there any prayer requests that we'd like to share this morning? Yes, Patty. Isla. That's great. I'm going to repeat that because that's really good news to share. I'll make sure people on Zoom heard it. Uh, 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 Patty Ebner celebrating the birth of her ninth grandchild, Delilah Marie, on June 1st. And, and just health and, and joy as that family continues to grow and, 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 and expand in love for one another and for this new life. So for blessings for Delilah and her whole family. Thank you, Patty, for sharing that. Other prayer requests? Pastor Will? Yes. It's Pat Rankin. Hi, Pat. I want to... I want to thank everyone. Oh, someone else talking? No, you're there. You're good. 
I want to thank everyone for uh, the prayers, the phone calls, and the cards for Jimmy and Chris. Um, both are doing really well. Chris had to have a colostomy, and he is physically and mentally good with this. So I think it has a lot to do with the prayers, and keep them coming for a speedy recoveries for both guys. And thank you all very much. Of course, it's good to hear that they're, that they're recovering well, and we'll, and we'll keep Chris and Jim both in our prayers as they continue to recover. Um, other prayer requests today? Sonny. Oh, Sonny, and then, and then Chris. Okay. Um, Jack started a new treatment on Friday. Prayers for that it will be successful. Appreciate any prayers that have been given. Thank you. Of course. Yes, continue prayers for Jack and the new treatment. Uh, Chris. Happy Father's Day, yes. Yeah, and we want to pray and be thankful for our, our fathers, our father figures, and happy Father's Day to you if you are a father. Uh, and and uh, thank you, Chris, for reminding me and making sure that that got, got, got placed in here. And uh, hope that today is also just a good day to either relax or enjoy some time with the family or whatever, whatever is a meaningful Father's Day for you. Um, any other prayer requests? I'll share one that, uh, that has uh, been on my heart this week. As, as yesterday was, was Juneteenth, and Juneteenth, a celebration of, of emancipation and, and, and freedom um, um, from slavery for, for millions of people and, and, and what that means for, for the, for the African-American community and other communities of color. Uh, and Alan this morning, he flipped open his hymnal and the first uh, hymn that came up was Lift Every Voice and Sing which is uh, a powerful hymn about, uh, uh, for, that, for that community. And I just think that as we celebrate that, as that becomes a federal holiday, we also pray for continued freedom, for justice, for all people in our country and in our world, and, and trying to find uh, where God is calling us into that work as well. Um, and, and I would add that as we pray for those things, if, 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 it, if it's on your heart to wanna, to wanna do something, there's some really great organizations in our community. Specifically, uh, there's a Gaithersburg uh, um, Racial Justice Co Coalition uh, that I'd love to help plug, plug you in with. Um, but, but prayers for the celebration of that holiday, but also the spirit of what it means to be free, to be a just society, and that we are constantly seeking to, to advance God's justice and love in the world. Um, so that's something that's on my heart to pray for today. Other prayer requests? Joy's concerns. Uh, a couple names I want to keep in our hearts too. Uh, uh, Drew Stabler, who's a member of this community, as he um, struggles with some health issues, uh, I'm not sure I can share much more, but prayers for him and his family in this time. Uh, and, and just hold them in our hearts. Uh, and and uh, Dubby Barber, we haven't seen the Barbers a lot this summer. I know Dubby was struggling with some things as well. So prayers for strength for him and for Barbara and their whole family. Um, and, and Alan, if it's okay, we'll pray for your mom as well, um, who, who, who's been struggling with some health things. Do you want to share? Sure. Um, mom is in hospice right now, so uh, just prayers, you know, for whatever, you know, happens from here on out. And prayers for you too, Alan, and your family. Um, so we have a lot to pray for, both, both difficult and joyful today, and, um, and so if there's no other prayer requests, I'm not seeing any, not hearing any on Zoom, um, let's go to God in prayer together today. Would you join me in prayer? God of love, of eternal life, of grace, of justice, we lift up the many names on our heart. As, as the world, or at least our corner of it, begins to, to, to come alive and, 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 and move around as we begin to gather with one another again, we take moments just to pause and enjoy that we can be together. We pray for guidance for world leaders as they continue to find ways to move us past a pandemic, for those countries and places that are still in the midst of it, who that are still struggling 
that don't have access to the vaccine yet and, and, and maybe access to protective gear. We pray for provision. We pray for healing. We pray for guidance on how best to love our neighbor in all circumstances. We thank you for new life springing forth uh, for Delilah and her family, and we just pray for health and joy and just time uh, to grow in that love and the excitement of the hope for that child and, and who you have made her to be and who she will become by your grace and strength and by the love of her family. We thank you for good news for those who are healing, for Chris, for Jim, for Tom, we pray for strength in the midst of that, that you would be with them, that you would continue to strengthen them and give them patience and peace in this time of healing, and that by your spirit you would be with them. We pray for those who are still struggling with sickness, for Jack as he begins new treatment, for continued strength and peace, for the Light Body family, for Drew, and for Dubby. May you be with them and guide the doctors and nurses in treating them. Give them wisdom, Lord. God, we pray for Ruth, that you be with her and her family, for Alan and all of them in this time. That you would strengthen them, comfort them, and be present with them. And we just lift her up to you, God, and that whole family. God, we pray for moments to be reminded of your grace and justice. We pray for yesterday's holiday, for upcoming holidays this summer, moments to pause and be reminded of what our world, our community should be about. Freedom, equality, respect and care for one another, unity across all divisions. But God, as we celebrate these things, show us where we are not quite there yet. Open our hearts and our eyes to the injustices that still exist, to those who still struggle for their freedom, for their worth to be recognized in this world. And God, as people of you, as your children, lead us to be bearers of a kingdom that sees the worth the grace, the beauty of all of your children. By the power of your spirit, help us to transform this world, to always be growing closer to you. God, we pray today for fathers, for those who have a father they celebrate, or, or for those fathers who are celebrating being with their children today. We thank you for today. We pray that you be with them, strengthen them. We also pray for those um, for whom that relationship might be difficult, that you would comfort them today, for those who have lost their father early, for those who may have a strained relationship. But God, I pray for all those who are father figures, those who reflect the love of our Abba, Father God, those who reflect that love in the world. And may we celebrate them today. And in celebrating them, may we seek to be more like them, those good father figures who reflect your love. So bless these days that we get to celebrate and celebrate you. And we pray all these things with the words that your son Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Invite Chris up for our scripture readings today. morning. The Hebrew lesson for today is from Psalm 133. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. 
It is like the precious oil on the head running down the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. The gospel lesson today is from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with him in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat onto the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Here ends the gospel lesson. And our next hymn is hymn number 523 in the red hymnal, Suriname, Suriname. Please stand if you're able. So just a, an order of business before I read the scripture and we enter into this time. I know if you're on Zoom, the camera's been a little shaky, and, and we're not sure why, but I appreciate your grace, as I know that uh, our camera crew, tech crew, is doing the best they can and are doing a, a good job, I would, I would say. Um, but uh, 
So we're, we're going to read for our, our sermon passage today from the David and Goliath story, but we're just going to read a small section. So I just want to offer kind of a preface uh, for, for what's happening here. At this point, David, as we talked about last week, has been anointed by Saul, uh, Samuel to be king of Israel, but Saul is still king of Israel, and Saul leads his armies into battle against the Philistines. And before we get to this this section we're going to read. Goliath has stood out and has challenged the the Israelite army, and he's done this not just once, but day after day, waiting for someone to meet his challenge. And at one point, David comes into the camp and sees what's going on, and and, and we meet David talking to Saul at this point in 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we're going to read verses 32 through 40. I would encourage you to go back and read the whole thing. It's a, a beautiful story. There's a lot in there, obviously. One of, one of our favorites as, as uh, Christians and as, as followers of the word. So David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and will fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw and strike it down and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he he has defied the armies of the living God." David said, the Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor and he tried in vain to walk for he was not used to them. So then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we can say, thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? God, our Father of love and wisdom, of courage, and of strength in you, by the words of this scripture, by the inspiration of your Spirit speaking through them, encourage us, give us strength that this coming week and days and the months ahead we could more faithfully share your light, be your children, accept the calling you have placed on our lives. Open our hearts to what it is you are saying to us today, and let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be glorifying unto you. In Jesus, the word made flesh, we pray. Amen. But I feel very small and uprooted and desperate. These aren't words from the story we just read. They're words from Frodo Baggins before he begins his journey to save Middle Earth in J.R.R. Tolkien's The Fellowship of the Rings. If you've been uh, in person or or, or in uh, many of the services this year, you know that I often wax poetic about Tolkien's novels. They're, They're just brilliant from a writing standpoint, because the heroes in the novels are not the strong and the powerful and the kingly, they are the common and the simple. People like me, maybe people like us. Who here can't sympathize with Frodo being small, uprooted, and desperate? 
And the other characters in the story are often underwhelmed by these, by these heroes that, that Gandalf has chosen, by Frodo, by Bilbo, by Samwise Gamgee, and they wish that someone else more fitting had been chosen to be the hero of the story. Throughout the book, the would-be hero Frodo is asked to act less and less like himself and more and more like another sort of person. If only he was bigger, stronger, more seasoned in battle, more able up to the task. So our Old Testament story describes a young boy, David, being asked to be something different than what he is. Now follow me on this. Before he faces Goliath, Saul tempts David to be a king, to be the soldier, not just some young boy who got left out in the sheep field. Saul offers David a chance to cover up who he is with who Saul would like him to be, a great warrior in shining armor. And what Saul probably doesn't know, we don't know if he knows, but it seems he doesn't know at this point that David has already been anointed to replace Saul as king of Israel. Saul knows this David who has played the liar for him. He knows that David is young and insignificant, being the youngest of eight. He's kind of the least important in his family. And he knows that David is just crazy enough to accept Goliath's challenge, a challenge that Goliath has issued time and again and again, day after day, towards Saul and his army. And all of Saul's soldiers cowered in fear. And even Saul, the king of Israel, the one who, is already ha- who has the, the battles, who has the victories under his belt with all his armor and power and authority, even Saul sits back, refusing to stand up to Goliath. Saul is who we might consider to be that conventional hero. He has the resume to be a hero. He has the experience. And David is the overlooked shepherd boy whose dad failed to invite him in for the important ceremony with Samuel. So it should bother us, though. We tend to read past this quickly. It should bother us how willing Saul is to send David, a young boy, into battle against a giant, a man who is seasoned in battle. I mean, at first he says, you're just a boy, and he's been a warrior since his youth. You can't, you can't possibly defeat Goliath. And then Saul, so quickly after making that, that one little rebuke of David, Saul, so quickly after challenging David, is willing to say, go and may the Lord be with you. I wonder if Saul feels in that moment that he's sending David to victory or just to defeat, if he's resigned himself. This is all I've got. Go, and may the Lord be with you. Though Saul won't face Goliath himself, and he will send a boy to face Goliath, he offers David his armor. Now, I don't know whether this is practical. The description we get of David's armor is very similar to the description we get of Goliath. So there's kind of this, Goliath's ready for battle, you have to be ready for battle. Or if this is honorary, Saul giving David the honor of wearing his armor, Or if it's that Saul wants the boy to stand in for him, and if people can just see that David is wearing Saul's armor, then it'll be as if Saul fought Goliath. But we should pay attention specifically to this point in the story. Saul, I would argue in this moment, is trying to form David in his own image. This is what a king should look like. This is what a king should dress like in order to be king. You've got to look the part. You've got to carry the armor. To be a hero, Saul invites David to change who he fundamentally is, the shepherd boy who God has already anointed king. The irony is while Saul is worried about looking the part, he's not worried about doing the job. But the message for us here isn't necessarily in what Saul does, but in David's response when he puts on the armor. We've often, we've often heard it said that David said the armor was too big, but that's not what the Bible says. What the Bible says is, I cannot walk in these, for I am not used to them. Maybe another way to say that is, these aren't right for me. This isn't who I am. This, this feels wrong. God also calls us into a life of faith to stand against giants. And the giants we face may be hunger, poverty, loneliness, addiction, racism, hatred, pain, and fear. There are certainly plenty of giants in our world. And while we respond to the call, 
we should resist the temptation from others to conform to their idea of who we should be rather than to be who it is that God has called and anointed for the task. Saul is trying to conform David into the king that Saul would would want him to be, but God has called the shepherd boy, not the warrior king, to lead Israel against the giants. When the armor doesn't fit, we're being asked to pretend to be someone other than who God has called us to be. We are offered ill-fitting armor every day, the invitation to live into expectations that, expectations that betray who God calls us. It seems to me that many people are forced into a mold, myself sometimes included, rather than cultivated from who God has made us to be who God has called us. I wonder if in your professional life you feel pressured to put on the ill-fitting armor the traits and expectations that don't fit who you are, who God created you to be, the values and the gifts that God has instilled in you. I wonder if anyone here feels compelled to wear ill-fitting armor to play the part, to fill the role in their life. I know that there are thousands of megachurches led by high energy and charismatic pastors, and I am not like many of the successful pastors in our world. I come by that honestly. I tend to be a wallflower. I'm an extrovert, but I'm a very quiet extrovert. I'm not a ringleader, but I've had to come over the last few years to the conclusion that God was calling Will, the wallflower, not will the pretend ringleader that I just can't fit into that armor, that it doesn't feel right. And churches can wear armor too to play the right music, to conform to the right programming, to host the famous events. But what if we saw what we did in this community, in this holy family of St. Paul, as living into the calling that God has placed on us? here and now in this place and time, not seeking to wear the armor of another church, but to dare to be who God has anointed in this place, to dare to be the community that God has formed here and now, to be holy who God is making us, rather than to wear the armor of some other church. Perhaps being the shepherd rather than the warrior means serving our neighbors in unexpected ways, reading the Bible in new ways, worshiping, gathering, praying in new and organic ways, ways that honor that God has anointed us as the church, as the body of Christ. And there are some times where churches like the world burden people with armor to be someone they're not, to have to change themselves or weigh themselves down when they walk in the doors, rather than to be someone who God is working on and who God has called. We tell people they have to talk or pray or act a certain way or they're not cut out for church or they're not cut out for ministry. Sometimes the church can act like Saul, burdening the Davids in our midst to conform rather than honoring who God is calling them to be, than seeing who God has anointed. I have had beloved family members and close friends feel like the church is forcing them into ill-fitting armor, friends who struggled with addiction, but felt that they had to cover that up with some armor that denied their weakness. Friends that struggled with mental health, who were handed an armor of happiness to misshape their own struggles, not realizing that God calls and loves those who struggle, not those who have it all together. Our denomination is currently preparing to divide and talk about whether we would ordain LGBTQ persons or force them to wear ill-fitting armor, to recognize the call that exists on beloved children of God. And I know we all may approach this topic differently, that we may have different ways of reading that scripture, and I respect that. And and if that's a conversation you'd like to have, I'd love to have that with you one-on-one to share mine and to hear your perspectives. But I have a very dear friend in Jacksonville who loves Jesus authentically, who loves Jesus deeply, who has led me closer to Jesus, who has inspired faith in thousands and hundreds of college students, who honors God with his whole life, And last year, he shared that he often felt the church trying to put 
the ill-fitting armor on him, to be someone he was not in order to be committed to the God he loves. He's quoted as saying this, and I found it very profound, so I want to share it with you all today. He said, we put on armor for many reasons, but the most obvious one is that for most of us, life is a battle. So it makes sense that we would put on coverings to protect ourselves, but as Brene Brown taught us, and as Jesus Christ molded for us, vulnerability is strength. Jesus was another person who came into the world to be king, who didn't look like a king, who didn't act like a king. But he knew that that, as Messiah, was who he was anointed to be. So how do we, as the universal church, be a family that doesn't burden people with the ill-fitting armor of expectations, but even in our differences, we cultivate the anointing that God is already placing on us, the calling that God has already placed on each of us to be who God has created? How do we, as children of God, take stock of the uncomfortable and burdensome armor that gets put on us every day, the expectations that weaken our calling and and stifle our ability to live out that we are children of a loving God. The kingdom that God is establishing through David is one where being who David is, who being where we are, is our strength and courage. If David had worn the armor, he would have certainly died. But by taking the staff like a shepherd and the slingshot Like a shepherd, he is able to defeat the giants. And we grow and we change. God calls us and we we transform, that is true. But I believe that God called shepherd David and he grew him into the king he was meant to be precisely because he was the forgotten shepherd David. The kingdom of God is where we refuse to have the uncomfortable cover-up of others' expectations dim the light that God is cultivating for us to shine into the world. David shows us that living into God's calling for us will defy the expectations placed on us and that God's anointing for us gives us greater strength than any armor in the world, any mold in the world, any expectations placed on us, that the calling God has placed on you and you and you and me prepares us to fight giants. So right after Frodo has said those words that he feels small, uprooted, and desperate, Gandalf, who's this wise wizard in the story, says, My dear Frodo, hobbits are really amazing creatures, as I have said before. You can learn all there is to know about their ways in a month, and yet after a hundred years they still surprise you. There's a message of encouragement there. For this simple, unexpected hero, Frodo, there is a surprise that can arise from who he is. From this simple, unexpected hero, David, showing up in his shepherd's tunic with his staff, there is surprise in the midst of the warriors around him. And for however unexpected our lives may be to the rest of the world, for how the world may try to mold us, there is a surprise that God is working as we go into the world to fight the giants, to be the kingdom of God, to express love and grace in new ways. So this week, reject the armor of expectations and live into who it is God has called and anointed to be children of a living and loving God in the world. Would you pray with me? In this moment, God, show us who it is you've called today. Show us the gifts that you've already given us so that we may refuse to live up to others' expectations but instead live into who you call us to be. And God, by your Holy Spirit, open our eyes to how we call and encourage the calling on others. Stop us from putting the armor on someone else so that all 
who come to live free in you could find the freedom of grace and the freedom of service to a loving God. In Jesus' name, amen. a reminder before we dismiss that there are coffee and drinks and donuts downstairs if you'd like some. You don't have to stay for the visioning meeting to, to enjoy a little snack before you head out. Um, but if you would like to stay, we, I'd love to talk with you all. So receive this blessing. May the God who empowered David to stand up to Goliath strengthen you and who he has made you to be. Go with the courage that Christ and the Spirit and the Father are with you. Go with the assurance that you are called by God. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, everybody.